Now, before I start talking about these nuclei and, and what they do, we know that there's a huge sensory distribution. We know that there's V1, V2, and V3, and this is going to be collecting all the sensation from the face. So whereabouts does V1, V2, and V3 take sensory information from? Well, here we go. So I like to think that this looks like a profile view of Scott. Um, and what I want to draw your attention to is that everything in orange is going to relay sensory information via V1. Everything in blue is going to carry information, sensory information via V, sorry, via V2, so the maxillary branch, and the red bit here, um, all this information is going to travel via V3. So if you were to see a drawing like this without the um, V1, V2 and V3 on, hopefully you'd be able to know that V1 is the orange bit, V2 is the blue, and V3 is the red. So information is going to be coming from nerve endings in say V1 so if you imagine this is an axon it's going to travel via the via the um, ophthalmic branch and then we're going to have our pseudo unipolar um, cell body in our trigeminal ganglion which wouldn't be here anatomically but this is just to show the point and then it would go on um, via the um, ophthalmic branch till it reach the the trigeminal ganglion which would be here and then it would go along the sensory route so you can just see the, the pathway, but obviously that's that's not to scale or anatomically correct because the trigeminal ganglion would be somewhere over here. Um, but that's just to help you see what's going on. So let's just continue the drawing. So let's say this was our here. This was the same neuron. It's coming cell body in the trigeminal ganglion through the sensory route here. And then information is going to synapse on some of these ganglion, sorry, some of these nuclei. What I want to point out is that the blue nuclei, the sensory nuclei, traverse pretty much the, a large proportion of the brainstem, and even as far down into the spinal cord. And this is relevant because if you have a brainstem lesion, it's not inconceivable to have some kind of symptom that would relate to the, the function that the cranial nerve 5 um, conveys. So, um, you don't really need to know too much about brainstem lesions, but if, if you were to do some extra reading, you might hear of all different, um, for example, there's something called lateral medullary syndrome. But And again, because it's a brainstem lesion, you quite often see problems relating to the trigeminal nerve. This guy up here, we're not going to talk about because it's quite complicated and it's, it's not really relevant for what you're doing. But I just wanted to put it there to, just to show you that there are nuclei related to the trigeminal nerve that do go up as high as the midbrain. So we're going to talk about these two. So this here is our chief sensory nucleus, and this here is our spinal nucleus 5. And then the three of these, including the green um, motor nucleus, are going to comprise our trigeminal motor complex. Sorry, what am I talking about? our trigeminal nuclear complex. So our trigeminal nuclear complex, as I'm sure you've heard Scott talk about. So our chief sensory nucleus is going to be dealing with, or is going to be receiving information about light touch and discriminative touch from the face via the distributions as set out by V1, V2 and V3. So imagining this was carrying information about light touch from V1 and it would be synapsing let's just do it in red synapsing here on this nucleus or we could have information that was coming um, to synapse on our spinal nucleus 5 which would be information relating to pain temperature crude touch and pressure and this this loops down so this I'm drawing it in red maybe I should draw it in blue actually so it's going to loop down like this so the information. So these would be multiple different nerve fibres. And before it reaches spinal nucleus 5, it actually is carried in a tract. So these are going to be axons. And this tract here is going to be called spinal tract 5. So information is going to travel via spinal tract 5, which is analogous to Lasau's tract in the um, spinal cord. 
Then we're going to have the axon synapsing onto the spinal nucleus 5. And then what's going to happen, and this is also true for the sensory, um, chief sensory nucleus, is that you're going to have first um, order neurons synapsing on these two nuclei. And then they're going to cross the midline. Then they are going to travel up in the TTT, the trigeminothalamic tract, where they are then going to, so the second order neurons, so the second order neurons are going to be the ones that are going to travel up the TTT, so after synapsing on the um, nuclei, travel up in the TTT, where they're going to synapse in the VPM of the thalamus, and then they're going to, the third order neurons are then going to travel up um, to the cortex. And Scott has talked about that um, in the course before when he's talked about um, sensory information from the face. So that's just a little bit of a reminder. So now all that's left to talk about is this green guy here. And this is going to be our trigeminal motor nucleus. And as you can see, this is in the pons. And this is going to be, so lower motor neurons are going to travel via the motor route through the foramen of Ali and then on through the mixed nerve of the mandibular branch. So the mandibular branch is going to be the largest of the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve and it's carrying it and it's the only one to carry motor information. V1 and V2 are blues, so they are only sensory. And the motor nucleus is going to be involved, involved in providing um, motor innovation to the muscles of mastication primarily. There are also a couple of others which we'll talk about when we deal with the mandibular branch in more detail. But for now, the key thing is that it deals with the muscles of mastication which are going to be involved in eating and chewing and opening and closing the jaw. And the motor nucleus, as you can see, as I said before, is in the pons and is leaving via the motor route also from the pons. And that's really all there is to say in terms of introducing the trigeminal nerve. Later on we will talk about each of the individual branches. Scott's talked about V1, which you can find on the website, and I will talk about V2 and also V3. Well, I hope that helps, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.